This backflow prevention device will be tested using a three valve differential test kit. Prior to testing a backflow prevention device, the device must be first identified. This is a double check valve device assembly as indicated by the ASSE 1015 number on the device. To determine the direction of flow, look for the arrow on the device. His next step is to number the test cocks. Test cock number one, test cock number two, test cock number three, and test cock number four. How do we know this is test cock number one? Well, test cock number one is located on the upstream side of the upstream shutoff valve or the inlet side of that upstream shutoff valve. Or another way of looking at it is that the arrow points to test cock number four in the direction of flow. The next step is to install our adapters. This is an adapter to fit this device. The next step is to flush the test cocks. It's important to remove the debris from the test cocks to get a proper test and to also make sure that you do not introduce any debris into your test kit. Flush test cock number one, number two, number three, and number four. The next step is to request permission to shut down. Close the downstream shutoff valve. How do you know that's a downstream shutoff valve? The arrow is pointing to the downstream shutoff valve. After closing the downstream shutoff valve, back pressure should be evaluated. To do so, take a standard pressure gauge and connect it to test cock number one. Open test cock number one. Bleed out any air from test cock number one. You can see at this point our pressure gauge reads 60 PSI. Close test cock number one. Use the same pressure gauge to take the pressure reading on test cock number four. Open test cock number four. Bleed out the air. And take your pressure reading. You can see your pressure reading here is at 55. Since your pressure reading at test cock number four is less than the pressure reading at test cock number one, you can continue on with the test. If the pressure reading on test cock number four was greater than the reading on test cock number one, that is an indication that a back pressure condition exists and the downstream shutoff valve is not holding tight. Correct that back pressure condition before you can continue on with the test. The next step is to orientate your test kit. The high control is closed, the low control is closed, and the vent control valve is open. Now we are ready to conduct our test. We want to measure the differential pressure across the first check valve, measure the differential pressure across the second check valve, and then we want to determine whether this device is in a no-flow condition. All tests are done under a no-flow condition. We need to test this device when the check valves are closing. To measure the differential pressure of the first check valve, we take our high control holes. How do we know this is a high hose? The test kit will indicate the high and low hoses. So the high hose goes to test cock number two.
open test dock number two. Connect the low host test dock number three. Open test dock number three. To measure the differential pressure, we need to make sure that we bleed out the air from our test kit. The vent hose should be in a bucket. Once the vent hose is in a bucket, we open up our high control side and bleed out the air. Open the low control valve, bleed out the air. At this time, you'll take your differential pressure reading. Your differential pressure reading should be one or greater. Measure differential pressure across the second check valve. Connect the high hose to test cock number three. Open test cock number three. Connect the low holes to test cock number four. Open test cock number four. Bleed out the high side by opening up the high control valve. Bleed the low side by opening up the low control valve. Take a differential pressure reading across the second check valve. And that pressure reading should be one or greater. At this time, you want to measure for a no flow condition. This is not a test for the downstream shutoff valve tightness. It is a test to determine whether the device is in a no flow condition. To do so, connect the high hose to test cock number two. Open test cock number two. The low holes connected to test cock number three. Open test cock number three. Bleed out the air by opening up the high control valve on the test kit and the low control valve. The differential pressure reading across the first check valve should be 1 PSID or greater. To test for no flow, we are going to pressurize this backflow prevention device and to utilize the high side of this test kit to indicate what is going on downstream. To do so, we are going to connect the vent hose to test cock number four. Before we do that, we need to bleed out any air. To bleed out the air, we need to open up the low control valve and bleed out the air. Connect the vent hose to test cock number four. Open test cock number four. To pressurize this device, we need to introduce water from test cock number two to test cock number four. To do so, we need to open up the high control valve on the test kit. After opening up the high control valve, water is now being directed through the test kit, up and around, and down into test cock number four. The pressure here is the same as the pressure there. To test for no flow, we need to stop the flow of water to the test kit. To stop the flow of water to the test kit, Close down test cock number two. Test cock number two, or the high holes, is supplying water to that test kit. After closing down test cock number two, observe the reading on the test kit gauge. It should remain steady. With the needle holding steady and the high control valve open and test cock number two closed, that is an indication that the device is in a no flow condition. This concludes the test of the double check valve device assembly, restore the device to service, and remove the hoses.
in order to evaluate the condition of the downstream shutoff valve, a flow downstream must be created. Create a demand by opening a valve downstream of the device. Watch for any flow from the open valve and observe the test kit needle. If there is no flow and the test kit needle is holding steady, the downstream shutoff valve is considered tight. If there is a flow and the needle drops to zero, the downstream shutoff valve is considered leaking. If a flow is created downstream and the needle drops to zero, that's an indication that the downstream shutoff valve is not holding tight. However, the test was done under no flow condition, provided that the needle held steady under the no flow test.